Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be building a miniature steam engine kit and simulating it using C++. I challenged myself to finish the entire project in one week, so it should be a pretty wild ride and I think you'll like the result. I'd like to thank Reyna, our first ever patron at the Master Mechanic tier, for their support. And a special thanks also to Squarespace for sponsoring this video and making it possible. If you need a comprehensive tool to set up your website, Squarespace is an amazing option. More about them later. This thing has been sitting around my apartment for months now, and it's finally time to open it. Sterling Kit sent me this engine to review, and I wasn't really sure what to do with it since I don't really do unboxing videos on my channel. Now that all the packaging is gone, we can start going through all the pieces. The build quality is actually pretty decent, and they did include all of the tools that you need to build it, which is good because I don't have any tools at my current location. The first step is to add these rubber feet to the bottom of the base. Now trust me, when this bad boy gets going, it's going to need these heavy duty motor mounts. Next we connect the piston to the connecting rod with a very very small wrist pin. Then we need to connect this cylinder sleeve to what I'm calling the cylinder head. There is a small o-ring that goes here and I used the wrong one, but I fixed it off camera so don't worry. The sleeve is attached with this plate and four screws. We can now put the piston into the cylinder through the bottom and slide the valve into its bore in the side of the cylinder head. The entire crankshaft and valve linkage comes pre-assembled with the kit. Now we can attach this plate which holds everything together. Once that's on, we attach the two engine mounts which will be bolted to the base later. The flywheel is then attached onto the crankshaft and secured with a set screw. The entire assembly is held onto the base using two screws which go through the engine mounts that we attached earlier. And now we can attach the frame to the cylinder and engine mounts in the same way as the other side. The manufacturer includes a pulley for the opposite side of the crankshaft, which I guess you can use to drive a load of some kind. This attached the same way as the flywheel with a small set screw. Now let's move on to the boiler. After putting the orange o-ring in the correct place, we can attach the outlet to the top of the tank. The two halves of the tank are held together with 11 screws around the perimeter and three of those screws are actually special, and they work as studs to attach the three legs that hold the boiler above the base of the engine. Three screws then hold the legs to the base. Once we attach this hose and the blow-off valve, we're done. After filling the engine with distilled water, we can add fuel to the cup under the boiler. You should use denatured alcohol for this, and not isopropyl alcohol like I am. I didn't really have any, and this was the best that I could do given my time constraints. Isopropyl alcohol has a very sooty flame, which you can see in the video. You probably also don't want to run this indoors on a flammable surface, uh, which is also exactly what I'm doing. Now trust me, I know a thing or two about freak accidents, okay? This is me almost getting Jay leno while I was trying to film footage for my first engine simulator video. Anyway, I wanted to try running this engine longer, but I decided to wait until I had the right fuel and a better environment to test it in. While it was running though, it was extremely cool and it worked surprisingly well.
I think I'm more suited to operating a keyboard, so let's move over to the computer and start writing the simulation. Now, you might think that I opened VS Code and started doing some really cool prototyping or something, but no. I like to start with the art personally. Now, I, I know it seems a little backwards, but I think that all parts of a project are intrinsically linked and kind of guide each other. It's kind of like how some games have their soundtrack written before the game. Anyway, I started visualizing the program in Blender and seeing what problems might come up in development. These assets are all temporary, but they can be cleaned up later. After a few hours, I had 2D models for all of the important components of the engine. And this is enough to get started with the programming, and it's a good place to end day one. As some of you know, I recently quit my full-time job at Google to work on YouTube and Engine Simulator full-time. It's been a really interesting experience starting my own business and managing an online brand. And that's where today's sponsor, Squarespace, comes in. Squarespace is a comprehensive website building and hosting tool that has a lot of features that are perfectly suited to online creators like myself. I'm actually building my company's website with Squarespace, and they offer a wide array of analytics to help you adjust your site to your target audience. They also offer a member areas feature, which is great for my current model, which relies on online supporters. It also integrates easily with my other social media. Check out squarespace.com to start your free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash onchthegreat to save 10% on your first purchase of a domain or website. All right, let's get back to programming. On day two, I set up the project directory. I forked the code base I used in the Engine Simulator technical explanation video, which has a lot of useful utilities for rendering. After quite a lot of cleaning up, I added a simple grid and reused the same stats display in the corner. And yes, the stats will be completely broken for almost the entirety of this video, so it's probably best to not even look at it. We can now export the art from Blender and start rendering them in game using my game engine. The assets look pretty rough, but I'm going to fix that later, don't worry. That's pretty much where I left things on day two. I know it doesn't look like much, but the foundation that we built today will allow things to develop really quickly in the next few days. Alright, day three. It's time to start simulating some stuff. First we need to bring in my physics engine. Now, some of the code that you see me writing might look a little pointless, but we're going to need it later when we synchronize the simulation to real time and the audio synthesizer. Once the physics engine was set up, I wrote some basic junk code to keep track of constraints and bodies, and some code to place all of the components initially. It's actually not trivial to solve this, and to make matters worse, some mechanical systems have multiple solutions, which makes writing an algorithm to choose the right one kind of complicated. You could use the physics engine to decide where everything should be placed initially, but it's probably best to just place everything properly like a civilized person. The rest is pretty mundane, just defining the constraints between all parts of the machine, and this is what we end up with. The last thing I did on day three was add the fluid simulation. Now this is more or less the same fluid simulation that powers Engine Simulator, but it's on my private research branch. And just as with an internal combustion engine, we can separate a steam engine into discrete volumes. So in this case, we have the boiler, the tube, and the cylinder. We also need one extra volume to represent the atmosphere. It was getting late, so I didn't have time to define the connections between these volumes, but I did add a single volume to represent the air inside the cylinder. Without it, the piston doesn't really experience any resistance to motion. With a fluid simulation enabled, and no flow through the valve, don't let that confuse you, the piston must now compress the air or work against the vacuum when moving up or down respectively, which creates this jerky motion. Day 4 is when things really started to get exciting. It's much easier to debug real fluid systems with gauges, and that's also true with a simulation. In Engine Simulator, all the gauges are procedurally generated, which is more flexible, but I didn't really have time to write another system like that. And I wanted these gauges to look completely different. So I modeled a new temporary gauge face in Blender, 
and I must have really been in the zone because I forgot third grade math in the process. This will be our main boiler pressure gauge. Now, the real engine obviously doesn't have one, but most larger steam engines will have a boiler pressure gauge, at least as a safety precaution. I've programmed all the connections between the gas volumes, but the valve still doesn't do anything. So as the piston moves up and down, it changes the volume of the entire system, which creates this pressure fluctuation in the boiler. I then added some code to account for the valve position. And to test that this works, we can initialize the boiler to a high pressure, which should cause the engine to spin, and it does. This is a good indication that the engine will run later when the pressure source is steam rather than compressed air. If we meter that flow, the engine will run slower, but for a longer time. Now that the engine is mechanically complete, the next step is to add steam. To make debugging easier, I added a visualization for the water level, which is uh, pretty basic. It's just a shader that clips all pixels above a certain level, but it works for this purpose. Now, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I know almost nothing about steam, and I'm not some sort of thermodynamics expert. I did do a few hours of research into this, but I'm not claiming that this is a perfect model by any means. All I know is it works, and it's a reasonable model for this application. Anyway, after wasting three hours of my life debugging my broken steam simulation, only to discover that I wrote an M instead of a G in literally the worst possible place, I decided to call it a day. Day 5. The end of the project and the end of my sanity are near. After almost rage-quitting programming forever the previous night, I decided to take it easy and work on the visuals again. Using a reference circle, I made sure that all of the separations between the objects were a consistent size and at least one pixel to prevent aliasing. Some of you are probably wondering why I'm spending so much time on the graphics. Well, I mean, if this simulation looked boring, no one would have clicked on this video, and that's just the reality. I mean, it's possible that no one clicked on this video anyway, and I'm just talking into the void right now, but whatever. If it looked bad, then even less people than that would be watching. And if there's one piece of advice that I'd give you if you're a programmer, try to make your projects look good. I mean, make sure they work first, but don't get into the mentality of overlooking aesthetics. If you focus on crafting your projects and giving them a brand, it also makes you take your work more seriously and overall leads to a better result. That's just my experience anyway. I admit that I went a little overboard for this project though. I wasn't really happy with any fonts that I found for the gauges, so I copied the text from a real gauge into a 3D mesh, and I used that instead. I think the numbers look pretty cool, and they match the 19th century theme that I was going for. I also changed the color scheme to look like a blueprint, and I, I know it clashes with my usual dark color theme, but I'm an artiste, and I don't like to be limited to a particular color palette. All right. Now, for the moment you've all been waiting for, it's time to add the audio, which I'm just going to rip straight from Engine Simulator, I'm not going to lie to you guys. Now, there's, there's nothing about that code that is specific to combustion engines. Uh, pretty much anything with moving gas could theoretically use it, and steam engines fall into that category. The audio synthesizer is a straightforward component. You just initialize it, start the audio rendering thread, and then feed it the results of the fluid simulation, and it'll take care of the rest. It actually worked great immediately. I, I was kind of shocked. I'm not going to show you because you're going to have to earn it by staying to the end of the video. But trust me, it sounds pretty cool. I was getting pretty tired by this point. I had been working on this project for like five days straight, but it was all coming together. The final thing needed was some controls so I could actually interact with the steam engine. Now, there are three important ones that I could think of. Adjusting the heat level, metering the output steam from the boiler, and applying a load to the engine. The heat level is pretty straightforward, and it's visualized using this heat indicator graphic. The steam metering control is implemented using a gate valve at the outlet of the boiler. Engine load is applied using friction from a brake, which can be pressed up against the flywheel. And with that, we're done. But not really. See, I thought it would be cool if the steam engine actually showed steam coming out of the exhaust port. 
Now, this is not going to be some useless particle effect. See, this is going to be a useless particle effect that is directly controlled by the output of the fluid simulation. See, there's a difference there. By using the vapor content of the air exiting the engine, its velocity and pressure, we can adjust the particle effect density and velocity to look a lot more realistic. Steam engines need some time to build pressure, of course, and I've programmed a bit of leakage into the valves since the tolerances are not perfect. Once it starts building steam, we'll actually hear it escaping through the exhaust port, and with the particle system that I added earlier, we're actually going to be able to see it. Alright, I think we have enough pressure to start moving now, so we can start releasing the brake. We can adjust the throttle valve, which also adjusts the speed. Alright guys, what did you think? If you like what you see here, I might include some steam features in Engine Simulator 3D, which I'm working on now. I use these mini projects to test and enhance my fluid simulation model, which is the same code that will go into Engine Simulator. This was just a prototype, and I probably won't be releasing it to the public, but members of my Patreon will get a version that they can try out. If you want to support the project, the link to that is in the description. Thank you very much to Squarespace for making this video possible, and Sterling Kit for sending me the miniature steam engine. Links to everything mentioned in this video can be found in the description. Alright, thanks for watching everyone, and have a great day.